Okay, now here we have a nice IV contrast enhanced study. CT abdomen and pelvis. Okay, there's your overview. So, three questions. One, is there an abnormality? Yes. Two, describe the anatomy including its anatomic relationships. And three, posit one or a couple possible diagnoses. Okay, so here we are at the lower chest level. Here you see the heart. This is the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. If you're ever unsure, remember the left ventricle is your home plate, home base, and it has the thick myocardium that the right ventricle doesn't have and neither do the atria, of course. If you're looking at the atria and you're not sure which is which, you'll see that the left atrium is going to be receiving oxygenated blood from the lungs, and so you will see pulmonary veins coming in from the lungs to the left atrium, which then goes to the left ventricle, which subsequently goes out the aorta, of course, to the entire systemic distribution. Okay, so here we have the liver. Something looks a little awry there, doesn't it? Something's a little abnormal. Uh, here you have the portal venous structures. Here you have a hepatic arterial branch. So it's not portal venous, it's not hepatic arterial, so it's probably biliary. That's the remaining tubular structure. So there's mild prominence of the biliary system. A patient had, had the gallbladder out, and here you can see the common bile duct going toward the pancreas, through the head of the pancreas, which is not real well de demonstrated here, but this is the head of the pancreas here, and the distal common bile duct should be emptying out into the duodenum. which is right here. And if you go farther, you see the transverse or third portion of the duodenum. You go up, back again, and here you have the second portion of the duodenum, which is the vertically oriented portion. And if you look at this common bile duct and watch closely, it just kind of disappears right at this level as it merges with the second portion of the duodenum. Okay. So what is abnormal? There is an abnormality. What's abnormal? You kind of find yourself sometimes lost with where to begin. So the space that is involved is the retroperitoneum, and I think you can see that very clearly here. You see the kidney is a retroperitoneal structure. It is in the perirenal space. And you remember that there's an anterior pararenal space and a posterior pararenal space, pararenal. So what has happened here? Well, if we go up, we're going upward here. Is the kidney the problem? Is this a renal process or something else? It doesn't look like the kidney itself is really in bad shape. It has some of this stuff around it, but the margin of the kidney looks okay. I don't see a renal mass. Tiny little sub-centimeter cysts. Uh, what's defined here is the perirenal fascia. And you see it thin and normal here, so whatever's going on here is infiltrating the perirenal fascia. And this is blood. And blood will usually be of an attenuation, if it's new, of 40, 45, maybe down to 30, 35, depending on the patient's hematocrit and how old the blood is. But if it's relatively acute, it should be fairly high in attenuation. And let's see what we get here. 47 Hounsfield units. <clears throat> so it's, an, it's a hemorrhage. It's here superior to the kidney. Hint, hint, it's superior to the kidney and it is affecting the perirenal space. You see how there's blood within the confines of this fascia just like you see the fascia here with just thin a little bit of little bit of narrow fat plane 
Here you see this blood also largely within the confines of this fascia. So what would be superior to the kidney that might hemorrhage and still be in the perirenal space would be the adrenal gland. And let's look over on the left side. We have a little renal cyst there. Or I'm sorry, on the right side. And here is the right adrenal gland. Now normally there's not a whole lot to see and that's why if you want to pick up an adrenal abnormality you always have to look for it. You, you the liver, spleen, a lot of these things, the aorta all jump out at you but for the adrenal you have to think don't forget the adrenals. That's what one of my professors taught me. Javier Javier Casillas from Mexico. Don't forget the adrenal gland. So there's a nice normal looking adrenal gland with two very thin limbs. And that's right about where this is. So this is an adrenal hemorrhage and furthermore you can see that there is active bleeding. So this is not a blood vessel in the middle of this hematoma. It is active bleeding. How do I know it's active? Well, we have just put dense contrast in the vascular system. So just like where the branch from the aorta is, is uh, branches there are clearly high density because of the IV contrast. So if this were to squirt out of the aorta or out of any other artery, it would also be high density, high attenuation because it's contrast opacified blood. It's not just blood. All of this less dense stuff, of course, accumulated before the CT scan and before the IV contrast was injected. But now we see that there is active bleeding. So it's not only a left adrenal hematoma, but there is active bleeding. And here you can see the active bleeding tracking off into different portions of the hematoma. Okay. Anatomically. Liver. We went through that. Look here, this is the porta hepatis. That's where three major structures course. And they are the hepatic artery. The hepatic artery is one of the branches of the celiac artery. So if we go up here, there's two branches off the abdominal aorta. Going downward, let's go up to the aortic hiatus. We see here again the esophagus is going through this hiatus between the right crura or the right cruce and the left cruce of the diaphragm. We go downward. We know that this is the right cruce and the left cruce is just obliterated, obscured by the large hematoma there look in the porta hepatis so if we go up high enough and we look for the first branch which is right here off the aorta you see it branches and it gives off the hepatic artery and the splenic artery it also gives off the left gastric artery which is smaller and it's probably that little doohickey there so this is the hepatic artery that's one thing that goes to the liver what else goes there? Well, the portal vein has to go there. Where is it coming from? From the mesentery and the bowel. So if we go out to the bowel here in the mesentery and you see all this mess and you don't know what to make of it because it just looks like all these lines and squiggles and stuff, go back upward to the root of the mesentery. Right here around the pancreatic head you'll see the superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric vein. Now the superior mesenteric artery is the one that comes out just inferior to the celiac artery. Let's see if I can get that in here. Oh sweet, that worked well. I didn't know I could even do that. This shows you that hematoma very nicely. Again, in the perirenal space. And look what it's done to the perirenal space. Even though it's a, it's a very small space, it varies from patient to patient, but even in this case you can see it's sitting here quietly. You'd never think there was much to that anatomy, but you blow up a, an adrenal gland like this and sure enough you get all the stranding and high attenuation and enlargement and whoa we got a big part of the hematoma down here too. So this is an unusually large actively bleeding adrenal gland hemorrhage. Uh, 
but back to the anatomy in question. Let's see if I can get a coronal. Here we go. Here we go. The contrast. All right. So let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so now here we are going forward. What's coming off the aorta on both sides? The renal veins. And you go forward, and here's two arteries. See that? That's beautiful, right here. This is a nice shot showing the celiac artery and the superior mesenteric artery. Now let's see, if I go if this is a celiac artery, it should give off a hepatic artery this way and a splenic artery this way. So don't make me a liar. All right, hepatic artery going off that way and splenic artery going off that way. And let's see if this is the portal vein, which I'm going to suggest. It's going into the liver. It should be collecting venous drainage from the mesentery, from the bowel. And if we go forward, here it is here. Here it is here, and here it is. This is a perfect shot to illustrate the superior mesenteric vein and the superior mesenteric artery. Now, if you don't believe that's a superior mesenteric artery, you follow it backward toward the aorta, and you see, aha, it is the second branch off the abdominal aorta. Here's a celiac artery, here is a superior mesenteric artery. So again, moving forward, you follow the superior mesenteric artery. You notice that there's a hepatic artery going over here. Here's the SMA, superior mesenteric artery. It goes out and then it dives down. And right alongside of it, the, the uh, portal vein, or the, here the superior mesenteric vein, rather, courses. So you have the SMA and the SMV, and they are receiving tributaries respectively from the arterial and venous supply to the bowel. So if you go out farther, you'll see these little branches branching further and further and terminating in these loops of bowel. This right here is the duodenum. Okay, so here you have the duodenal bulb. We won't go into that very proximal anatomy, but this is the second portion of the duodenum, medial to which always you expect to see the pancreatic head. And this is pancreatic head here. This is all pancreatic head that's tucked into that C loop, C loop of the duodenum. And you can see the common bile duct is quite dilated and you can follow it very tortuous going into the pancreatic head and even here it's very really very very dilated that's unusual to have something that's to have common bile duct dilatation that pronounced it would be worrisome for either a very small stone which I don't see or possibly even a tumor a pancreatic tumor or a tumor of the ampulla of Vater look that up so here you have second portion of the duodenum third portion of the duodenum and then the fourth portion you remember is just a little upward turn like that beyond which it gets out of the retroperitoneal compartment and moves into the mesentery right here so it's no longer retroperitoneal here it's retroperitoneal that's why it's fixed like that Right at this point is the transition where it then is free and mobile in the mesentery and lo and behold you have the very proximal jejunum right next to the SMA which is right next to the SMV. And you see these arterial branches going out in the mesentery, the fatty material that is the base of attachment for all of the, or most of the small bowel. Okay, and what do we have here? That should be pancreas. Yeah, this is body of the pancreas. Have a calcification there. And let's see if we follow it right here. It should get in, embraced by the C loop of the duodenum, and indeed it does. Now you have an idealized picture in your mind of what this anatomy is, and you will see that there's a tremendous amount of variation. So it's not the actual picture in your mind that you want. You don't want to see the way it's supposed to look. You need to have the, the concept of what 
the anatomic relationships are and you will see that those anatomic relationships are fixed but the exact appearance is highly variable. Okay, aorta, right and left renal arteries, here's the IVC, right renal vein, and then there should be a left renal vein going off from there somewhere. There we go, right here to the left kidney. Okay, that's enough for right now.